Hey folks, Evil DM here, and I'm starting a new series on my channel. It's going to be called Papers and Parsecs, based on the Star Wars D6 West End game role-playing game. I've gotten a couple of uh, requests by certain people and some people in my group that wanted me to do a series, and I've had various comments too since I have the Star Wars uh, actual playlist here on my channel from my group that we're playing right now. I'm one of the players in that group. And I got a few comments here and there about people saying, oh, it's pretty cool. And when I've shared it on Facebook, people are like, oh, I would like to, you know, maybe you could start a series on your channel. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm going to be looking through the first edition of the game itself is the game that most people commonly play other than probably revised and updated, uh, revised and expanded, which is the third would be technically third edition or 2.5, depending on how you look at it. Technically, it'd probably be 2.5, but that's either here or I'm not here to argue about editions or have any wars. This is the edition I learned on. This is the edition I played. I played a little bit of the second edition, which is the blue book with uh, Darth Vader's picture on the front cover. <coughs> Excuse me. became a little complex. Went back to this edition. Uh, this is the first one I learned. This is the one I loved. It's simple. It's easy. It's eloquent. Uh, you should probably have an easy time picking it up and playing it. These books are not that expensive as long as you find the ones that were made by West End Games. The ones that were done for, I think, the 40th anniversary reprints by Fantasy Flight Games were remade and beautiful themselves and came with special stuff, but those prices are so high and so jacked up that it's not even... You can get these books for these books right here are pretty cheap. I have a whole stack of them for my group that we use. Uh, there's plenty of places you can find it online. Go for it. So, like I start off any other series on here, I'm going to talk a little bit about character creation and building your own character from scratch, going over a little bit about the dice codes and things like that. Just trying to get your feet wet or your beak wet, whatever you want to call it, into the Star Wars role-playing game. It is a D6 base game, so you do need just d6 base dice which you can find in almost any hobby store game that you have on your shelf you know whatever the when this was made this hey the most common dice you could find d6 that was in like monopoly and things like that all these little games on the side whatever had d6 dice in it so you could just pull it right out and play if you didn't have a gaming store you can order it from online there was plenty of places to do it back then now it's you could practically throw a rock and you could find a store to buy dice. So it's not a problem at this point. But I do have a character sheet which I had found uh, that's fillable. I don't use this one. I just use the regular standard one that's in the book. But I wanted to do a fillable one just so you could see when I'm inputting it on uh, the character sheet. So you have a kind of like a visual reference as well. But first things first, we're going to head over to page 7 where it talks about creating a character. Now, the book really enforces and talks about using templates in the book. And while it's probably a good idea and a really fast way to get to start playing, I don't really think they're very... I mean, there's a lot of them. There's 24 character templates, as you can see here. It says selecting a template. There are 24 of them printed on page 123 to 38. I'll just jump over there so you can take a quick peek at what they look like. See, they're all sideways. That's why I really want to sit here. But it basically has the statistics all or the stats all filled in for you. And while I think that is kind of a cool idea for a jump start, if you just want to play, I generally want to, and they give you a backstory as well for your character. I generally want to make my own character, make the Star Wars universe my own. So once we find out from the GM, and I'll begin to this in another episode, what type of game you'll be playing. And when I say what type of game you'll be playing, I mean what era of Star Wars are you starting? Is the GM starting the game in? And he or she should let you know that right off the bat. So when you design your character, you know exactly where to go and how to do that. So let's just say we're doing a regular standard rebellion era campaign, which means the Empire is here, Darth Vader is alive. The Emperor is alive. It's one of those. The Resistance is in the background hiding. 
let's just say that uh, also another important thing to consider as well that you might want to ask your GM, will he allow or she allow force sensitive characters, Jedi's or none of those things, just regular plain old people. Most of the times that I've played in campaigns, it goes one of two ways. Either everybody is a force sensitive Jedi person or nobody is. And why we say that is because a lot of times the Jedis seem to uh, take the scene or the spotlight away from other characters. And sometimes they have a fair unfair advantage because they have basically their force powers. Well, I've never really felt that way myself. You have to worry, you know, what other people think. So anyway, let's get into the character build itself. Let's head over to page seven. Uh, so the way this is laid out, and let me pull up the character sheet for you so you get a, a good uh, idea of what we're talking about here. So here's the character sheet that I have down. This is the fillable one. It's from Star Wars. I got this from Rancor Pit, and I could put a, a little link in there if you really want this character sheet. I don't use this character sheet because I don't want fill-in sheets and stuff like that. I just handwrite it. It's simple enough. But the way things are written, and you can see it right here in the book. And let me just zoom in on that a little bit for you. Okay. And as I see it, it's written here in the book. Let me move my fat face out of the way. There. It's written here in the book. You see dexterity. Now, first we have dexterity, perception, knowledge, strength, technical, and mechanical. And they're pretty self-explanatory, but let me just go over them before we get into the uh, dice codes. Dexterity is your motor coordination, you know, the ability to move around, things like that. Perception is your ability to perceive things, as it says, see things, notice things. You know, look at someone and say, hmm, I think they're lying to me. Knowledge would be basically knowledge. You're basically stuff you knew growing up, things you've learned. That's that. Strength. Pretty self-explanatory for that one. Mechanical would be how you operate certain things as far as piloting a ship, uh, as far as riding a beast, maybe plotting the astrogation, uh, you and the, the guns on the ship. That's what that is. Technical is more of your ability to repair, fix, diagnose, things like that. So now that we got those things out of the way, when you're building your character here, you get 18 dice. Now, you notice that each of these just says 3D plus 1, 3D, 2D plus 1, 3D, 2D plus 2, 3D plus 2. So what this basically means, these are dice codes. And the D means it stands for just dice. Before it is the number of six-sided dice you'll be rolling. And after it is the bonus that you would apply or the what's left over that you would apply after you roll. So, for example, if I was uh, going to pull out my blaster and shoot the stormtrooper when I was trying to get away, I would take, see, says 5D plus 1. I would take the five six-sided dice. I roll them together and total those dice up. And let's say, you know, I rolled uh, 25. Not bad. That's really cool, actually. And then you'd add the plus one after it, making a 26. And you would tell the GM, I, I rolled a 26. And he would more than likely say you killed the stupid stormtrooper. But because <laughs> a shot like that is probably going to knock him right off his socks. But we'll, we'll get into that a little later on. So what you do is you have 18 dice to distribute among dexterity, perception, knowledge, strength, technical, and mechanical. Now, the rules do state that nothing to start can go over three dice. Nothing can go below two dice. So you can't have something that's like mega powerful. And some GMs will allow you to do more or less depending on what you pick as far as race. That's another thing I have to back up and say that the game assumes that you're playing human characters and kind of pushes upon that there's a whole section in the book that allows you to the gm to make up alien races and templates of alien races so you can apply it to this and make your job a little easier when building it but that's for another time i'm just going to assume that you're playing a human you're going to play a smuggler you have 18 dice to distribute now you can break up dice. And a lot of people get confused on how that works. 
So every one dice can equal three of these little plus ones. So say I have 18 dice. I'm distributing them around. And I'm just like, all right, we're going to do uh, 3D and perception because I want to be, you know, really perceptive. I want to make sure I can spot things and see things and, you know, see somebody's lying. I want to be able to bargain my way out of a situation. I'm going to be a smuggler, so I'm going to want to do that. I'm going to put 3D in strength because, you know, I want to be able to lift things. I want to be able to, you know, if I need to get into a fight and beat the crap out of someone, that's something I need to do. Uh, technical, maybe I'm not so good at, you know, repairing things. I have I hire somebody to do that. It's my assistant. I'm only going to put the minimum of two dice in there. Mechanical, I want to be able to, you know, pilot the ship, uh, you know, do the shields, the gunnery, things like that. Anything mechanical-wise, I want to be able to do that pretty well. All right, so we're doing that. And knowledge... Uh, and maybe I don't know a lot. I'm I'm gonna yeah I'm gonna put it into 2D into that, and then I'm gonna put 3D in dexterity because I want to be able to you know use my blaster. I want to be able to dodge out of the way. I'm gonna be able to you know use weapons and melee attack and things like that. So that leaves us. If you've noticed, that gives us 16 dice that I've talked about. Because if you look, here's plus two right here, and a plus one. That's another one dice that we haven't used yet. We got a plus one here and a plus two here. That's another. So we still have two dice, and we can break it up like this and add the one here, the two here, two here, one there. I can go around the whole thing and add plus one, plus one, plus one until it's used up, and then go plus one, plus one, plus one again until it's used up. That's basically how splitting dice work. It's, it's pretty simple, and it's something you'll get used to when you're playing. And uh, it does explain it here. For splitting dice and everything like that. But you also can, when you're first starting, and this is something why I said you have to ask your GM if you want to play with Jedi or Force-sensitive characters, because you have to, and this doesn't actually show it here because it's not a Jedi or Force-sensitive character person. That's where we will go back to this sheet here and see how it has Force-sensitive you would just basically put in yes. And you can spend some of those points, like if we're going to do two here, three, three, two, two, two. So two, four, six, eight, eleven, fifteen. 11, <clears> 15. <throat> So now we only have three points left, and generally you can spend them here on these, and you do the same thing. You just put 1D. Well, that's not how you do it. 1D, 1D, 1D for the last three points. But that all depends on if the GM allows it. If he doesn't want to have a Force-sensitive character in the campaign, he may say, no, maybe later on we'll discover we'll leave you as Force-sensitive, but you have no dice and it's just distributed amongst your statistics. <clears throat> you can do that. But now it gets into the point of we want to do some skills. Skills really define the character, as you can see here. These are generally when you use the first edition sheet, it actually has them listed out for you. But that doesn't mean just because this is what's here, that's all you have access to. There's a bunch of skills in the book that aren't listed on the sheet that you can write in. That's why they have the blank spots here. And that's why a lot of character sheets have all this blank spots. So you can basically write in whatever you want. It's also, the book does encourage that if you can think of something that's not in the book or not listed, go ahead and actually make it up. But you want to check with your GM first and say, hey, this is really cool uh, skill that with dexterity. And it's like, you know, I want to be able to do this or that and, you know, go over it with him or she and see how it works. And you can add it in actually as a new skill. And not have to really worry about it. And then you'd have that skill. But sometimes you have to be careful when doing that. As you might shoehorn yourself into something really specific. 
and you'll never use it that often. And then, then when that one chance comes up, yay! But then otherwise you're sitting there with a wasted skill point. So, but anyway, you can distribute uh, 7D into skills. Now, when I'm saying into skills, I'm talking about see how it says blaster, 5D plus 1, dodge, 40. That's what I meant by the skills. These are all the skills under the actual attribute itself. You have seven dice to distribute. You can also split it up. See how a person does a plus one, plus ones here, or plus two. You could split it up however you want. When you do that, you're going to say we're going to have a melee attack. We want to specialize in that for a skill. So what we could do is we're going to drop two points in that because we want to be able to fight really well. Okay, so you're thinking 2D. No, no, no. What you do is you take the dexterity number here, which is 3D plus 1. You add your two dice, and it becomes 5D plus 1. Much like this blaster right here, it's 5D plus 1. Okay. Let's say, let's go to somewhere there's no example at all whatsoever. So let's go, say you wanted to, you know, uh, streetwise. So when you go into a new, you know, new town or a new city, you want to be able to, you know, Figure your way around and see if you have a chance to find some information out, things like that. Let's say you want to be really good at that. So you throw in three dice. Now that streetwise is going to be listed as 5D plus 1. Get it now? You're kind of adding the skill dice to that top number and writing it down here like this person did in the example. There are no cap limits on skill points whatsoever or skills whatsoever at all it can go as high as it needs to go while these attributes are actually capped i believe at uh four or five i'm not sure exactly i don't think the book is very clear on that uh I'm sure someone can tell me in the comments because i've always capped them at four as the maximum sometimes it's five depending on the situation but that's that i mean it's however you want to play it so once you get that done, you have all your skills done, the seven points, your attributes are done, you put in your name, your character name, your player name, you don't have to put that, that's up to you. Then you start filling in like the little details, like the height, how much he weighs, sex, and age, uh, his physical description, just put a brief description of what he or she looks like. And then you're going to want to ask the GM how much... How many credits do we have? What type of equipment would I have? And generally that's assigned to you, or you can actually say, he can say, oh, here's a bunch of credits. Just go ahead and pick whatever you want, you know, and things like that. I've had GMs just be like, yeah, you're a smuggler, so you have a blaster, you have a comm link, uh, you have about 2,000 credits, things like that. I have 25,000 credits dead to the crime boss. I, ugh, I wouldn't want to do with that. Finally, after you're all done with all that, you're going to add one under force point. Now, that's not to be confused with the force. Basically, a force point entitles you to do a couple things, but generally it's used for doubling your dice. Now, I've seen various house rules where it allows you to double your dice. Yeah, but it also allows you to re-roll your dice. Uh, things like that, adding to your dice, but you mostly want to save it for re-rolling. I'm sorry, doubling your dice, I apologize. You just want to double your dice, it's the best thing to do with the force point. But you might want to use it wisely, because you don't just get it back. You have to kind of earn it back. So, when you're blowing a force point, I'd save it for a good situation where... You know, it's a dire situation and it's life threatening. You got to save your own life or you have to save someone else's life. Or there's a bad guy that's really tough and you really need to get one up on him. So you burn that first force point. Generally, you will get that force point back at some point during the adventure as long as you play your character appropriately and don't accumulate dark side points. That's another episode coming up soon. But that's generally how you make a character. This the skinny of it, real simple. Making a character, you just follow through the book. If you don't want to deal with that, take a template from the pages we talked about before. And all you have to do is do the 
is the skills themselves. And you get seven dice for that. So if you want to just go over to that page, 133, yeah. See, they're all, they're all filled in for you anyway, so all you have to do is do seven dice and distribute among the skills however you feel and then fill in the information, and you're all done. And that's basically how it works as far as making a character in V6 Star Wars First Edition. I may have missed something. Hopefully I did not. I'm pretty sure I covered the basics of it. Go ahead and feel free to comment and let me know what I have missed and uh, what you want to see going forward. And we'll take it from there. So with that said, we're going to keep it original, keep it old school, and good night, everybody.